Hello, this is Mr. Real. I invite you to my channel dedicated to the history of Fabrika Maszyn Żniwnych w Płocku, a harvesting machinery factory in English, the only manufacturer of combine harvesters in Poland and one of the largest factories of this type in the world during the Cold War. Today we will learn about the history of the first harvesters that was produced in Poland. It is one of the first self-propelled harvester in general and probably the most popular post-war self-propelled harvester in the world. We'll start with a brief history of the birth of the combine harvesters and the history of this particular model. And there is a lot to talk about. So let's begin. The first combines were created in the USA and their tractive force were teams of about 20 horses or mules. A crew of several people was needed to operate it. The next stage was constructions pulled by the more and more popular tractors, first steam, then diesel. There were also constructions with an additional engine driving the threshing machine. Their development lasted until the outbreak of World War II, and only during the war did self-propelled constructions appear, where the engine drove the threshing machine as well as the chassis, and the machine was an independent vehicle. The rapid development of combined construction was forced, firstly, by the war effort in terms of human resources, men went to the front, but also technological development, more efficient, more modern engines and other technical novelties appeared. The leading manufacturer of agricultural machinery in the USA at that time was International Harvester, and it is one of their constructions that is the hero of this episode. International Harvester was formed from the 1902 merger of McCormick Harvesting Machine Company and Deering Harvester Company and three smaller manufacturers, Milwaukee, Plano, and Water, Bushnell, and Glusna, manufacturers of Champion brand. Its brands included McCormick, Deering, and later McCormick Deering, as well as International. In November 1984 IH finalized a deal with Teneco to sell the farm equipment division to Teneco's subsidiary Case Corporation, and the brand continues as Case IH which is owned by CNH. We are talking about IH-123SP, where SP refers to self-propelled. Built in 1942, this small combined harvester involuntarily became a worldwide hit in the post-war years. In Europe, these combines appeared during World War II, thanks to the Lend-Lease Act. That's right, in addition to planes, tanks, cannons, motorcycles and military trucks, tractors and harvesters also flowed to the Allies. The war effort was not limited to the front, every army simply had to eat. And as the old wartime proverb goes, battles are won by the army, wars are won by logistics. IH-123SP sailed to England, France and the USSR. This is how the international career of our harvester begins. As was the case with many constructions obtained from the Allies, the Russians copied the IH-123SP and gave it the name Stalinik No. 4. It was produced in several factories in the USSR since 1947, for example, in the former Rostelmash plant in Rostov-on-Don. Under the license, he also went to conquer the republics of the USSR, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland and East Germany. This design differed in individual countries with some modifications, for example engines. The international engine was replaced by the Soviet constructors with a ZIS-120 petrol engine, in West Germany it was a 6-liter and 6-cylinder IFA diesel engine, in Poland it was the S-43 engine from Sterakowa's truck factory. The Germans introduced the most modifications. The harvester in West Germany was called Frischritt E-170, and its subsequent modifications were marked with numbers from E-171 to E-177, they were produced in 1954 to 1967. Interestingly, the Germans also planned something like a heavily modified Stalinik marked as E-510, but it never went into production, and was replaced directly by the E-512. Hungarian machines were marked AC-330 and AC-400. These were varieties of the Stalinik number for harvester with a 3 and 4 meter header. Individual countries changed some design elements, but roughly the harvesters did not differ much from the IH-123SP, as you can see in the presented photos. Closing the international thread of this story, let's return to the thesis, it was the most popular combined harvester in the post-war years it was produced in 10 factories and appeared on at least 3 continents. On the one hand, IH could only look at it idly, on the other hand, it already had more modern constructions in its offer, which were conquering Western markets. Let's move on to the Polish backyard, 
where the introduction of the Stalinic No. 4 into production, based on a license granted by the USSR, is no less interesting. The first Stalinic appeared on the experimental field as early as 1947. Over the next several years, several more combined harvesters were imported, exclusively for the needs of state farms. However, the low level of technical culture or education of both employees and managers of these farms, as well as high failure rates and long downtimes of machines, effectively inhibited the revolution in Polish fields. The Stalinik for was not very well made. A separate problem was straw, which was not able to be properly collected and transported after the harvester at first. It was not until 1952 that a larger batch of Stalinik 4S, numbering 500 pieces, was imported from USSR. This set the pace for changes, because the following year a political decision was made to build a combined harvester factory. The harvesting machinery factory at that time produced, among others, the Z5 a Reaper, which was the most advanced product of the plant. The jump to a self-propelled combined harvester was therefore an incredible challenge for the factory, its crew and the whole country still recovering from the war. The construction of the first prototype was not without the help of many institutions and plants throughout Poland, and even help from abroad. Since the Russians delayed sending the documentation, Polish engineers made construction diagrams based on an imported copy. Many elements of the new harvester were handed over to subcontractors scattered all over the country, and numerous consultations, possible corrections or tests were often associated with the personal presence of employees or the transfer of information using traditional methods, by phone or by letter. These were truly pioneering times for the factory and the enormous effort of thousands of people. The crew fought a separate fight against the adversities of fate. All machines produced in FMZ were made on the basis of patterns, i.e. elements to be copied at a given workplace. For this purpose, they had a machine park of 219 machines of pre-war production. Meanwhile, the technology and complexity of the combine required the use of a technical drawing and making repeatable elements on its basis. The entire crew had to be taught how to read a technical drawing and how to use the new tooling. It was not an easy task, because all the time they also had to develop standards for the existing assortment, including the aforementioned Reaper. There was still a shortage of qualified workers, and every graduate of a university or technical school coming to the factory was immediately thrown into the deep end. In the meantime, 29 pieces of modern machines from the allocation of the ministry were handed over to Plock, which also had to be learned to work from scratch. In a word, they worked like crazy. The experience and knowledge of veterans, the help of delegated employees, combined with the enthusiasm of young factory owners who were aware of their participation in a groundbreaking project, allowed the task to be completed ahead of schedule. On the 14th of April 1954, the first Polish combined harvester was built. It is significant that when they wanted to drive it outside the factory to show the harvester to the residents, the gate turned out to be too narrow. Out of necessity, it was dismantled. The Shira was officially presented during the celebration of May 1, Labor Day. ZMS4 was produced in a total of 1,473 pieces, which, combined with the previously imported S4 machines, gives about 2,000 combines operating in the fields in the 1950s in Poland. Now let's take a look at the combine. It was not an easy machine to operate. It wasn't just the operator's station that left much to be desired, snuggled up against the radiator, sitting next to the loud engine and protected only by a small canopy from the weather. The harvester itself also required constant monitoring of threshing parameters and component operation. With its low throughput of around 2 kilograms of weight per second, the combine often became clogged. A separate problem was the need to dry and clean the grain, ZMS4 did not cope well with it. Meanwhile, the yield per hectare was growing, so it will not be surprising that the design turned out to be outdated already in the fourth year of production. The nail in the coffin turned out to be political turmoil, which caused its production to drop drastically after 1957. It was then that the assumptions of the plan for domestic agricultural production changed, shifting the burden of its implementation to small-scale farms. And individual farmers did not need or could not afford modern agricultural machinery. At that time, the harvesting machinery factory had to go back in development to the production of a less complicated assortment. However, the production of combined harvesters was not intended to be abandoned. Established in 1955, the company's design office was aware of the need to create a modern, European-class combined harvester. Attempts were made to modernize the ZMS4, a version with a bagging machine and a chaff catcher was created, 
and constant work was also done to improve the production technology. It was also clear that the future of agriculture lay in combined harvesters. Based on the already acquired experience, the challenge of developing our own design was undertaken, the Vistular Combined Harvester. Stiller was a highly advanced modification of the ZMS-4, designed for export markets. Although it did not conquer the world, it was exported, among others, to Italy, Brazil, Greece, Cuba, Sudan, Malaysia, Venezuela, China, India and Egypt. In a word, most of the countries of the Eastern Bloc. There were several versions of it, including a caterpillar drive, and the total production amounted to 19,000 units. Numerous foreign contacts and the opportunity to compare them with Western combines were an incentive for the harvesting machinery factory crew to develop and create new constructions. But that's a story for another episode. I invite you to the materials contained on this channel. It presents the history of the establishment and development of Fabryka Maszynzywny, the only producer of combine harvesters in Poland, and their most popular product, the Bison Combine Harvester. For international views, film recorded during the harvest presenting the real Polish countryside may be attractive. If there is interest on your part, there will be certainly be more matters in English. See you, Mr. Real.